James Happy Family. That's, that's, that's the way it really works, uh, is that, uh, that we really understand and recognize each other as kin to each other and friends of one another. And so it's good to have all of you once again in Plymouth Congregational United Church of Christ. Amen. And I just want to simply just remind us that this is the day that the Lord has made. Yeah. And we should rejoice and be glad in it to give God some praise for just waking you up. Give God some praise for bringing you through another week. Give God some praise for God has been merciful and God has been delivered. And we thank the Lord for all the ways in which God has brought us through. Because sometimes, uh, as I always say uh, here at the church, uh, we go through a week and, and, and we get so busy, even in retirement sometimes, we get so busy uh, that we stop, fail to stop to say, thank you, Lord, Amen. for bringing me through that moment. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the proper words to say when I needed to have proper words in my mouth. Thank you, Lord, that I didn't curse you out. Thank you, Lord, that I kept my Christian composure. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the strength just to get through another day. But when we come to God's house to truly get into worship, we give God the praise for all the times we fail to praise the Lord. Praise Him one more time because you know what He's done in your life and you know how the Lord has married you and blessed you and kept you. You know what God has done. With everything that is within us, we praise the Lord. Amen. 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 This is a time that we take to just share, share a handshake. Uh, we get a little chaotic at Plymouth when we do the Passion of the Peace, and we're going to be a little bit more reserved this morning. Amen? Right? You know, to greet somebody across the aisle, maybe it's somebody to your right, to your left, uh, and, and because we want to have this music to come back and bless us, and we want to move through that as rapidly as possible. And so, sisters and brothers, I, I, I invite you to pass the peace with your neighbor, to wish them the peace of Christ, that the peace of Christ be with you. Share that with your neighbor.
50-city tour, Reverend William Barber, uh, Reverend uh, James Forbes, uh, Pastor Emeritus of Riverside Church, and, uh, uh, and also Tracy Blackman, uh, the Acting Executive uh, Minister of the United Church of Christ. And they're coming to D.C. Uh, in August, and I'm serving as the organizer for them to come to D.C., and we're going to have uh, an all-day training, so if you're able to come to that all-day training from 9 to 5 on August the 12th. Uh, at Michigan Park Christian Church, uh, that's at uh, uh, South Dakota and Taylor Street. Uh, and then we will have our Justice Revival on August the 28th, which is the anniversary of the 1963 March on Washington. Uh, and that will take place at 7 p.m. at Pennsylvania Avenue Baptist Church. It's there in your bulletin as a flyer, and you're invited to come and be a part of that because we're looking at the need to really build sustainable movement at this time. And sisters and brothers, we need some sustainable progressive movement because we have all of the reactionaries swirling around us right now in our political life, all of the racists that are trying to fan the flames of racism and xenophobia, and we need to be organized to speak good news to the world and good news to the nation. So I invite you to come and be a part of that today. Uh, as we continue to go forth in this worship, this is a, we 
getting ready to receive our offering. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Amen. Because you know, sometimes, sometimes we come into God's house and we get cheap. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> we go into that strange little corner in our pocketbook and find that dirty, wrinkly dollar that we have gotten from somewhere and, and, we, and we timidly put that into the plate hoping that nobody else sees us dropping a little dollar into the plate. <laughs> now, 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 I gotta talk about money because, you know, it takes uh, money to run the ministries and the work of Jesus Christ. It takes money for people to go to school and be trained in these wonderful gifts of singing and music. It, it takes money to be able to produce the beauty that we need to have in this world. And so, sisters and brothers, I don't want you to be cheap. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I want to see, I want to see, you know, we make confessions to the Lord. Amen. I want to see every cheapskate in the room raise their hand. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to ask the us to lock up everybody that raised their hand. Amen. Because we're going to get into a little, a little, a little, a little covenant here where we share what God has blessed us with. Because, you know, when we give, we are simply being stewards. Because all that we have, we really don't own anyway. We've been blessed. God has blessed us. God has provided. Do I have a witness? Amen. 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 God has blessed us at times when we weren't even deserving of the blessing. Amen. And so how much, how much do you give in return? How much, what does a grateful heart look like? What does a life that has been saved look like? So sisters and brothers, I want you to not be that cheapskate, but be a faithful giver and give with a joyous heart. I'm going to ask our trustees to come forth and prepare to receive those offerings. In addition, we have a second offering today, and the second offering the deacons will lift up because it goes to the benevolence fund of our deacons uh, and of the church to allow us to be of service to people who may be going through some rough spots. So please be generous with that as well. But please, 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 please be generous with your tithes and your gifts and your offerings. Amen. I'm going to ask uh, Minister uh, Jason Wilson will come forth and lead us in a hot burger. Yes? Oh, yes. Okay. Before we do that, I'm going to invite the July Comic Club to come forward. I miss that. We want you to come forward Amen. and we can make your presentation and we can do that in July.
my personality is who I was also as the girl. Well, the girl wouldn't speak to me. She spoke to me like to me, and if you know she today and talking with us this morning. The July Congress Club wishes to thank all who either made a contribution to the club and or made a contribution in memory of a loved one. Because we're still collecting contributions, we will make our presentation as a day to be. Thank you and have a blessed day.
not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of, of compassion, with the bands of love, and I came to them as one, who each of the yoke on their jaws, and I bent down to them and fed them.
truly blessed right now this morning. We've been blessed in such tremendous ways. And uh, to hear and feel the spirit in this sanctuary is to know that God is alive. And God is in the midst of all of our hearts. And I want to just come and just focus for a second upon this text uh, that Minister Wilson lifted up from Hosea. Hosea, I don't know if you heard the words because sometimes we tune things out, but it's a beautiful, passionately written piece. It says, when Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. But the more I called him, the more he ran away from me. They kept sacrificing to the Baals and offering incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up in my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bonds of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. Join me in a moment of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to examine this word. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you open our hearts, our minds, and our spirit to a place of illumination so that we might understand and see what is in this text for us. One thing is always certain, Lord, that is that you are the potter and we are the clay. So mold and shape us as you would have us to be until we are perfectly fitted for your kingdom and able to call ourselves disciples of Jesus the Christ. Now as we come to this teaching moment, Lord, you hone it, you shape it, you develop it, you send it forth as you see fit. Allow it all to be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen want to just speak for a little on the subject of unrequited love, unrequited love. Many, many years ago when I was a young man in Chicago, I fell in love with this woman. Amen? And this woman had everything going for her. I mean, everything going for her, Brother Ed Davis, when... She walked in a room, everything stopped. She was put together well, amen? And, and, and I would do anything, anything to try to win her love. I lent her my car. She took it out and wrecked it. I lent her money for rent. Never got it back. <laughs> I mean, I went to the jewelry store with no money but with a little credit card and was paying for it for two years but bought her a necklace that I could not afford. <laughs> In fact, the woman was so well put together that she could do almost anything to me and I would still be sniffing behind her like a little puppy dog. And everything I, I did to try to attract her lasted for a hot 10 minutes because she was busy running somewhere else. And time after time, I, I did what I had to do, I thought, in order to bring her back in, into this orbit of love and, and care and compassion. But whatever I did was not good enough because her spirit was in a different place. Right. Now, I'm lifting this up because if you really understand the book of, I, of Hosea, Hosea is exemplifying in his own life the infidelity of the people and the fidelity of God. I mean, Hosea goes really overboard. He goes out and he marries a woman named Gomer. And Gomer is a cult prostitute. And he has children with her. And he gives these children these very dramatic names because in his own personal relationship, he is acting out the problems of Israel. To one of the children that is born, he says, your name is going to be Lower Me, for you are no longer my people and I am no longer your God. And to another child, he names Lo Ruhamah, which means not pitied, 
for no longer will I have pity upon you. Uh, and, and, and you can hear God's pain in all of these names that are being assigned to these children. And the other child was named Jezreel for the crimes that were committed, committed in the valley of Jezreel. There was a coup, you see, against King Ahab carried out by Jehu, and there was severe bloodshed in the valley of Jezreel. And so he named a child Jezreel. And in that text, uh, 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 Gomer continues to run away from Hosea. And Hosea continues to pursue her and bring her back. Hosea showers her with gifts and loving kindness and everything that you can imagine in order to hold Gomer in the orbit of his love. But no matter what he does, it's not good enough. No matter what he tries to show, what he tries to demonstrate, it's just not good enough. She continues to run away from the bond of love. Now, I, 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 I was thinking, that's our problem. We run away from God's love. We run away seeking everything else and trying to get over, trying to get over quickly, trying to do our own corner cutting in order to try to put our lives together without having God at the center of our existence. We are just as uh, 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 wanton hearted as Gomer is. No matter what God has provided, we, we are thankful for that today and we've forgotten all about the gift and the blessings tomorrow. And what we're being reminded of here is that no matter what our heart is, where our heart is, God is still pursuing us. God is still trying to call us back home. God is still trying to surround us in God's love and passion and compassion. You can hear in this text the painful heart of God. God is saying, do you remember I raised you up? I taught you to walk. I showered you with the gifts of life. I poured out my heart. And, and you can hear God saying, no longer, I'm going to have pity because that's a hurt heart. No longer are you my people, that's a hurt heart. And it kind of reminds you not only of God's loving relationship with us, but sometimes it reminds us of a parent's painful relationship with us. You know, that parent that had hopes for us. That parent that had expectations for us. But, you know, we ended up as we moved into adolescence and into young adulthood, we wanted to do it our way. We wanted to have our own independence. We wanted to uh, have our own autonomy. We didn't want anybody to tell us what to do. And, and, and then uh, one day, thank God, maybe we came back home with our tails tucked between our legs. And, and then we found out what unconditional love was like, that there was somebody to receive us back home. There was somebody that said, I don't care where you've been. There was somebody that was able to say, I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what the world labeled you or called you. You are still my own. And I bring you back into the bond of love and forgiveness and healing and wholeness. That is what God is. Somebody ought to say hallelujah if you know what God is because everybody sitting up here is not all holy and sanctified and haven't been that all your life. If you're like me, you got some sin in your background. If you're like me, you got some hurt in your background. If you're like me, you got some pain in your background. If you're like me, you've gone down some wrong roads. But thank God that there is a God. Thank God that God is merciful. Thank God that God is love. Thank God that we are able to come home into the presence of the Lord. Somebody need to thank the Lord today because you know where you've been. You know what you've done. But thank God there is God. Oh, if I was to tell you my stuff, I'll be still trying to get your chin up off the floor if I was to tell you my stuff. And you see, sometimes you can't tell other people your stuff. I'm going to be truthful because sometimes people will use what you're going through 
to hurt you and not help you. But thank God that even in those moments, I can go to God. He already knows all about it anyway. No matter how I dress it up, no matter how I try to justify it, God already knows about my stuff already. God already knows that I'm messed up. God already knows uh, uh, where I've been. God already knows about the dirt behind my ears or the dirt I've tried to clean up and freshen up with some cologne. God already knows. But thank God that I'm able to come into his presence and say, just as I am, without one plea, that the love of God died for me, that God shed his blood on Calvary, that the Lord rose up on a cross one day so that I might become free in my own burden and invited me into his presence to deliver to me eternal life and a redeeming spirit. I know that there is victory in Christ. I know that I've been healed and blessed and redeemed by the best and therefore there is nothing that the world can do to me any longer because I've been cleaned up by the Lord. Oh, I pray that somebody heard a word today and somebody want to give themselves to Jesus today. Somebody might want to come and say, Lord, just as I am today, Lord, heal my heart and heal my spirit. If that's you, if you're looking to come and and have a Savior to fill your heart and soul today, I invite you forward. If you're looking for a church home today, I invite you forward. We are just waiting to receive you. Why? Because we've already been received. And the important thing that we know is that when we came here, we weren't worthy. And as we stand here, we're still not worthy. But thank God that God is God. That God able to receive us in spite of ourselves. The doors of the church are open. I pray somebody here today will come and ask for Jesus to come into their hearts. I pray that somebody here today will ask for them to become part of this mission of Jesus Christ. The doors of the church are open. I'm going to ask that we stand today and as the song is lifted up today, we're going to just give thanks in this moment. Let us all stand for a second. Lord, we thank you for this time of prayer and devotion, this time of worship. And Lord, as we hear this song, Lift it up in honor and memory of Prince. If there is a heart that is moved, if, that is, if there is a soul that is stirred, if there is somebody who is saying, I, I need to be filled more with something good, then I invite you to come forth as Brother Bobby Felder and his friends come back and David Cole step forward to lift up this invitational song in memory and celebration of Prince's life. You may be seated for right now. You may be seated, and if you feel stirred to come forward during the singing of the song, to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, before we do this next song, uh, I came over last week and had a conversation with uh, Reverend Hager about doing this number. Uh, we thought it would be quite appropriate. We saw the flyer. We saw a picture of Prince on our flyer. So Reverend Hager had to lay downstairs to throw the old flowers away. And we do a new flower with Prince's picture on it. And, and say that today we would uh, do a tribute to one of the great, great, great musicians of our time. Uh, fortunately, we have a uh, very, very lucky. We have uh, a gentleman up here who's a longtime friend of mine, one of my students at UBC. Uh, I've followed his career. And he's going to do French for me today. His name is David Cole. Our guitarist. He not only sings like French, but he plays guitar just like French. 
for the security of the I thank you, I thank you, Madam Chair. I have a version of Prince's uh, Purple Rain featuring, of course, David Cole on guitar, and he's the one to also do the vocal. Thank you. <laughs>
Amen. Have we been blessed? Yes. Amen. Yes. And there's two more, at least two more, selections that are coming up. And uh, as we prepare for this uh, closing selection, then I will come back and lift up the benediction. Uh, and then we ask that you stay in place for the post room. Amen. All right, what I would like to do uh, before we do our last song, and hopefully everybody will join us on any praise. I think all of y'all know the words that. I would just like to take a short time to uh, introduce uh, these musicians. I would like to say I, that I have been a real man. I have been very blessed. These guys have been with me for a long time. Uh, very large musicians, uh, they all uh, have their own bands. They're, they're very, 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 very busy. And I'd like to tell you that you know that all the land performances that you've seen us, we had the go out for a saxophone player, Eric Scott, with us all this time. But it's showing how great these musicians are. Eric Scott and his quartet is now appearing there now uh, for one month in, in Dubai. For the one of all for the one of all the for the one of all the four days will be performing at one of the top hotels in Qatar. And he won't be back in, back in time until September. But I, all, I say that all to say that, that there are there are so many other great, great, great musicians. And uh, I talked to Wes and Wes said I was talking out to the in the city of Washington, D.C. He called a replacement for her, Antonio Parker. Let's give him a round of applause. This man is a great musician also. And as you know, he's still an advocate. You know, he's a wonderful, wonderful musician. And we are so glad to have you. Uh, I would like to just say real quick, Michael Thomas is our trumpet player, a well-known musician in Washington. Okay. And Tony Parker has his own group. He's a great musician too. And alto sax. Our tenor, our tenor sax is the band director of the Coolidge High School. Yes, great musician. Ben Sam. Of course, on guitar, our guitarist David Cole. One of my students. Another one of my students, Ron Compton, on drums. Jim Smith on piano, great pianist. And, and the fellow that helps me put all of this together, every time he helps me put the band together, uh, my really great, great friend, Wes Biles on bass. And we have four great singers with us. Let's give the lady that did the Water Frame Reality the skills ship. Of course, a well-known legend in Washington, T.R. Day. On, uh, <laughs> and we also have a great lawyer in our group, um, Bradley Thomas. <laughs> if anybody needs a lawyer, he's the man. <laughs> and I can't, what can I say about the next man? Uh, this man is an ex, I guess you know he's an ex Redskin, back, uh, defensive back. He's with the Redskins for four years, a uh, defensive back. The man who runs Westminster Church on Friday nights, if you've ever been down there, Dick Smith, unfortunately. <laughs> and, and of course, we cannot do all of this without uh, uh, you on as good as the sound that you hear. And our two sound people, my son, Ron Felder, and Willie Gardner. Uh, they're wonderful. And so I want to introduce you to We want to all thank Bobby Felder for bringing us all together. So how about it for Bobby? Okay. Yeah. All right, now we're going to, uh, we're going to do, uh, uh, and we'll do our flyway as you're leaving. But uh, our last selection, we'd like to have all of you joining with us on doing this every praise. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think you'll enjoy this. Every praise.
celebration and of joy. And uh, it's all right to dance in the aisles. Amen? Uh, and, uh, because when, when you feel the joy, you might as well just show the joy, right? Just to show out because God has showed up. Amen? As we go forth from here, let us go forth from here and share some good news with somebody. To recognize that we might be the light that somebody might see this week. And so let the light shine in us. Let the light shine upon the world. Let us bring the good news of hope and joy and love. Let us stand against the divisions in this world and call for a unity of love and a spirit of justice. This is what we pray for in the name of the Creator and the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. and amen. I was, my son just reminded me of something I almost forgot. Uh, a lot of these songs that we, we're doing today, we have on the CD, Amazing Grace, a very, very good CD. It's just for $10. Uh, if, you, if you want to buy two or three or four or five of them, this <laughs> is an ideal present for your musician, your barber, your grocery store, anybody you know that you, your good friend. It's a good present. They'll be on sale up here. It's just $10. Amazing Grace is the name of the CD. So if you would like one, please come up after the show. We we'll close out, but I'll fly away.
We hope to see you again next year. Christmas Eve. So put that on your calendar, Christmas Eve.